G'day, how you doing? Ian Applis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a video for you beginners out there who like to learn how to paint in acrylic. I'm just gonna get some sizes on the canvas there for you now in inches. And I'll get some colors going up the screen there to my left, all right? And write them down, pause it, write them down if you wanna paint along with this. Then watch the video a couple of times and you'll know what I'm up to as well, all right? So we've got some beautiful subtleness in this one, and it's gonna be quite a good painting, I reckon. And it's just gonna make someone go, you know what, I like that. It's gonna be beautiful. I've got the land mass masked up, so as um, I don't get that retarded paint under there, all right? So come on over here, and let's get right into it, all right? I'm gonna start off with my craft paint and a bit of retarder, not too much, because there's not an overly lot of blending clouds in here, but there's some merging of colors, so I need a little bit in there. And I just wanna mix this craft paint up with me putter on a brush, okay? So I'll get the sky pushed on. I don't want too much on this one. So see, normally you see me ladling it on there thick as buggery. This one's just getting pushed around because I want to get the water and the sky reflections done at the same time. So that's why I've masked up the land mass. Go over there. Now that didn't take that long at all to get all that paint on there. That's why I like this putter on a brush. Then I'm just gonna stroke it nice and flat and smooth so there's no big chunky brush marks everywhere in your canvas painting, all right? All right, I've got some red gold down here, permanent lindrin, cerulean blue and gray, and I'm gonna mix these up as I need them. Now, I want just the littlest bit of this into there just to taint it, that color I'm looking for. And this is mainly for the middle of the painting, which is about here. So I'm gonna sky, water, area at the same time, come right across, right across. Don't want it too dark. I'm blending it now into that white, nice and subtly, subtle, subtly, subtle. I think that's the word I'm looking for. There we go. Beautiful and soft. This is gonna be a nice soft painting. I love doing soft paintings. Now I'm gonna get down to the water and I want the gray mixed with a bit of blue. Not too much blue though. We want it more on the gray side. Okay, more on the gray side. I'm quite happy with that. Beautiful. Now the border is about here. Get this into the water, right up to that orangey color. Push it right on, get it right in there. It's gonna be a bit of a bank there. I can do that to there for now. Now see where it's meeting that orange? I'm gonna use the tip of the brush now and X strokes, bring it down, distort it, get that nice merging of the two colors. Beautiful, exactly what I wanted. Now I've got some quinacridone red violet. So we just need a little bit of this, or oh, not that much Ian. And I might taint that with a little bit of blue as well. So get some of this red violet. I don't want too much of this. The white, I hope, is going to um, really tone it down. Let's see what colour that's going. That's going. I'm just testing it on the board there. That's what that noise was. Now I'm going to put some of this white in it. There we go. We can make it a bit more opaque. See what colour it's turning. That's the colour I want. So get a bit more white in there. Just so it's not too dark on the canvas because they're very subtle colours. A bit more white. A bit more white. That's the tone I'm looking for. You don't want it too dark. And we'll get this up here, push it into the sky, push it in, join it up to that orangey color there, crisscross it there, get it right over there, get some more 
crisscross it to the edges in the corner get it to that orangey color get rid of any dark bands that you may have produced in your stroking All right now I'm going to use the tip of this brush I'm massaging it into this canvas here it's doing a bloody wonderful job there we go I'm just joining it up to that there to that orange there like that now I've got some titanium white just to put some glare in the sky and the water because those colors are very loud up there so see here I want a nice glare over here just to get rid of so it doesn't just look like a big thing like that so I want to try and create glare now so I'm just pushing that on into that violety color pushing it in I'm not going too much into that orange I'm just sort of hovering around here massaging it in slowly coming to the tip of my brush see because the tip of your brush has got bugger all on it where that bit's got a lot on it okay now you can wipe it so I will wipe my brush like a gentleman and we'll just get that glare in the sky smooth and out that's why I only put a little bit of retarder because it's allowing that paint to merge still okay see how that merged together there now we want some more white down here for the watercolor okay just get a bit of glare in the watercolor as well I'll add some craft white there because I've got some left over I might have to brighten that up a bit more and I want a nice glary patch over here like that bit of a glary patch there I think the top I might have massaged it in a bit too much but this one here is working better get that there like that see how this brush I'm just using the tips of the bristles now so I've grabbed more titanium white out of the uh, tube let's stamp it on like this first into that corner and then I'll brush it through because you see how I brushed it in it pushed it right into that color so this way it allows it to sit on top of there then I can blend it through so I need to wipe it okay I've given it a wipe why I do that because when I've wiped it sometimes your hairs are all over the place and I just sort of iron them back ready to rock and roll again that's why I do that now we'll just lightly get this glare in the sky crisscross it and join it into that violet because you don't want that violet very loud you want it nice and subtle but there there we go I'm going to crisscross some of this just to get rid of those lines and we've just added a beautiful amount of bullshit to our background sky colour there now before we finish the water let's hope that hasn't dried on me I want a little bit of um, darker cerulean blue with that grey there I might put a pinch a bit of that whack in there just to give it a darker value pinching some of that because I just want where it's going to hit the shore a little bit darker so from about here I want to get a darker value lacing into the water there like that there we go just about there keep it in cahoots with the horizon line these strokes see see I've left this a bit late because it's starting to dry up but I'm making it this brush is strong it's not weak and soft and flopping on me there we go now we just want to put our bank in so I'm mixing my grey with some burn umber just to get a nice grey both sides of the brush so I don't get any surprises a nice soft I didn't want to use white I can use grey just to get this tone here so now all this here is the land so I'll quickly put that there get it I'll get some more on the brush and get it pushed out into the water there all the way about there and 
just blend that into the water there now. And I can add darker values to that as I need them when I'm detailing the painting, okay? Just like I'll show you now as an example. Get a bit of the darker on the brush. Come on. A bit of darker on the brush. There we go. And just pull them in. So we can detail this later. I am getting just some of the actual burn number on its own on the brush <laughs> and just trying to create those little darker bands a bit more so we're a bit light there we go keeping it in cahoots with the horizon line just going to pull the masking tape off and if there's any ridge on my horizon line probably not too much but i'll just use my finger to squash it down if there is not there's not too much there it's just I didn't want, when I paint this landmass, I didn't want all that rubbery, bouncy, retarded paint underneath it. Because even though you dry it with a hairdryer, or I do, it's still a bit, it's very easy to break into it and disturb your paint you're putting on top of it. Okay, I've got me grey. Now for the background mountain on the horizon line, I'm going to grab the burn number and grey again. So I can get a nice light value of that colour. And it's pretty much, I'll just stamp it along the edge there. Coming along there, coming along there. Now if I was putting this over that paint that was under here, it'll be digging into it by now. That's why I've learnt to mask up if you're gonna do a lot of heavy brushing over the sky areas. To probably about there, because there's another mountain in front of that I'll just come across here because there's going to be more trees there so about there now you can use your brush to create little brush marks it'll just look like tree out, trees out there if you want so somewhere about there Now I will put the reflection of that bit in the water, okay? Uh, where are we? We're about here. Now I want to get this in the, so we got the, where are we? We got the point about here. We got that other point about here. That's about there. Okay. And that's coming down to about there and along. Okay, that's pretty much, I can come down there a bit I suppose, that's pretty much the shape of the water reflection I want in the water and I'll show you why. Because simply the very, I don't want to draw a line like this for the reflection, I want it to have scallops coming out in the water to give it that illusion where it looks kind of real. So we're going to, I'm going to try I might need another brush, but I'm going to use this. Yeah, this one's got a bit of a bend in it, so I'm going to get another flat. There we go, which is more chiseled and straight, hopefully. Just so as I can get the, um, the scalloped edge of the mountain in the water. And once I've got that, I'll block it all in. So it's going to give that real glassy, wet look in the water. I need a bit of water on there just so it's going to transfer a lot better than what it is because it's very temperamental. Give that reasonably the same colour as well. So that's going to have some other stuff in front of it there. So I'll stop that bit there. We'll put one every second spot, okay? Just like that. And then come back, load your brush and do the middle ones. That way you're getting it jagged. And then we can fill that in. This is just a simple, easy way, 
but it's it's a bit of time consuming but my goodness this painting's going to outlive you and me okay and you want those people in the future when they look at your art to go wow it's nice you know all right, I've dried that just so as I can get rid of the um, these see-through bits. Get them a little bit opaque, more solid in colour. Nice thin ones coming off that. These might need two coats as well. But we're kind of making ripples within the water of the reflection. Just like that. Very minimal. Okay. I'm just grabbing a little bit darker value of that one. Not too much dark, but just a little bit noticeable of that colour. And uh, along my horizon line, I want something coming across here as well. So I'm going to, I'm just using this brush here. I'll come to about there. And I want to get this up. Just some kind of tree stuff there okay I'll, go, I'll do the top half first and then i'll pull the bottom half into the water just something like that nice and dark in there and then just pull the bottom half down just like that dab it pull okay now i'm grabbing just the straight burnt umber on its own and we'll get the rest of that land mass in there first i'll grab my bullshit stick and i'll just grab that bottom edge where i need it to be nice and sharp which is right about here somewhere look at that nice and sharp beautiful okay He's nice and sharp where I want him to be. And where are we? I can use my, where is it? My flat filbert cat tongue one. And I'm gonna load that up now because this is closer. And these are just trees. I might have to do these two coats, okay? But these are coming down here. A lot darker than what that was we just put on before. <clears throat> and it's pretty much up here there just showing some of that other color within it and it's going to come all the way from here so i'll do the top bit first just so i know where i'm going go up a bit there that's where it's going to be so there's the horizon line so all i have to do is quickly blob that in with my paintbrush there we go I've done the main body of that. Now we're going to pull down the reflection of that. But if I can get a thin line between that landmass to the right and the reflection just somewhere here, I'll be so appreciative of my efforts. So I'll try just to get the thinnest line in between. Got to load up my brush again. It's breaking up. Just something all the way to here. So I'm using my bullshit stick to achieve this just there like that boom i just want that and if it looks like snot i'll just paint that little clear line in there now we want to grab the paint paint this on and pull his reflections down as well okay just like that paint them on pull them down now there is retarded paint under here, so I've got to be careful. See, I'll, I'll end up digging it up. I don't want to go excavating the old paint layer that I've done previously. Oh, this has got to come. Let's go in line with the, um, that was a bit long now. I'll come down to a point here. Get that in there. Could probably use a flat for this so 
So I've dried that, so I'm gonna fix this boo-boo up I did here. So I'm gonna pick up this color and I'll paint this back into roughly where it's gotta go. And I'm gonna spread it out so it doesn't look like a big patch mark there. You gotta bleed it in, feather it in. Got a lot of water there, so that's why it's doing that. scratchy and coming down on that angle the way it should be I just got carried away and brought it all the way down just so there's no little pathetic half-baked brushed attempts on your painting there okay now I've got some raw sienna dark and I want to get some burn umber in there just to make a different value of a brown so I have another bush out here now. So I want to create this one all the way from, where's my horizon line there? So this is just some other bush. I'm going to put it in this color. All right, just dance over the water there. And then I will add its appropriate darkness. And this is more closer to us. It's a totally different. So we're getting that there. Just do it in a straight line from the horizon. <laughs> now I'll give that a dry because see how it's, it just keeps pushing through. We'll give it a dry so we can add more layers to that, okay? All right, I've given it a dry just so as I can, because see it's very translucent, just so I can get, get it to show its full potential color. Dabbing it on. And just where the, see I know where my horizon line is. I'm gonna pull bits of this down into the water as well lob it on there and pull it down. Now I'm just going to add a bit of a tint to that colour, so I'm going to put more of the raw sienna dark in there and probably a little bit of white now just to show some darkness. I mean not darkness, highlights of it. <sighs> Leave him I'm just using this to make me shrubs. It's nice and easy. There we go. And we'll pull down into the water as well. Okay. I've just got the littlest of black where the horizon line is, which is somewhere here. I want to Pull some darkness down, just there, into the reflection, somewhere about here. And then I can taper that up, taper it up into the shrubbery there. And if you really need to, you can highlight some of the highlights back over this just to sit it down if it's too in your face. And we'll just come back over that. There we go. And down here as well, in the reflection, little bits. I want a shrub there, kind of a dark one, so I'm gonna grab just the... Uh, Burn umber. And I wanna bring a shrub in front of this, just something to put a tree there so it's going to come all the way out about here somewhere somewhere about there that's cool nice and hairy now I've picked up some black on that brush and where I feel I want the bottom of that bush I'm just going to try and let's see in there yeah I've got a bit of dark values within there okay that's it plenty stop now I'm grabbing that burn umber again and I'm going to Highlight it with just with some cadmium yellow light. And that shrub that I just put on there, I want to just get some, there we go, in front of the one that I put on before. How's that looking? <laughs> Could have used a different brush, I suppose, but too bad. There we go. This is going to have a nice tree there. This is just subject matter in the background. Okay, so I'm grabbing black and I want some landmass now coming out here. Just 
maybe something jingering out into the water there like that on a slight angle. That'll do, and I'll bring it all the way back into here. Where are we? Now we'll put, I'll make that a bit bigger just to cover up where I haven't got the reflections because this is in front of the reflections. Okay, and this is just going to be some slather of rock with bits of growth on it and all sorts of business there. And we'll get all those blobs off. Probably put another bit right out here somewhere. And then we can come in there, about there, that's all right. And I want something here, some kind of ground rocks, some mossy grass or whatever, just detail matter. All here, this, I was just blacking it in. Get that out there like that. Now I don't want straight lines like that, I'm gonna fix that up. I'll just get that there first because We've got all kinds of, these are rocks. So we can keep them straight at the bottom though. Bits of rock out there, you got me? And now I do some more rocks. Straight at the bottom. Straight at the bottom. And stuff in here. Just scattering out now, coming around here. <laughs> Giving some scragglers out there as well. While we have this paint, I want to grab some of that burn umber. And I'm mixing that with the black as well. There's a bit on my brush still. Because all this bank has kind of I don't know, rocks and all sorts there. And there's, try and do some rocks like that if you can. That's what I'm gonna try and do. So I might use a different brush. Let me see what one's gonna work for me. I've got a kind of a thick liner here. I'm gonna see if I can get some nice stone, cause I need some stones out here. Oh yeah, there we go, that's what I want. Some big ones and some little ones. Try not to make them too rectangular. <laughs> there we go, I'll get a, some of them all here. I'm not thinking, I'm just pretty much going for it like that, okay? All right, now I just wanna quickly get this tree coming in here. I want some, where's me, I'm gonna have it on some stuff here, so I'll just quickly get this. Twisting it, twisting it. I just want to do the main body of this tree. Now I want to show you something with trees. You don't want a tree to look like a flat hand or a, a coral fan on your painting. You want to have it with some dimension. So get some trunks, some branches. I've just come on there. I'm going to just wiggle it. I'm going up and then I'm just going to come down okay just like that they just add a bit of um, dimension perspective within your paintings you know and yet you, you come off things like here I'm gonna come off here bring that one down there boom get something off there so we'll get something there see how I'll cross that over I've just grabbed a bit of lighter brown on my brush there, just so I can hopefully, let's see how we go, not too much, probably a bit of light on this side of the trunks there somewhere. That'll do it. All right, I'm gonna make out there's a bit of a rock with some green growing on it. So I've just got some sap green here. And I wanna kinda of come from where this tree is on a, different like that and I want to sort of end it there there we get 
get some of this coming down there like that. Dear whiz, I put a lot of green on my um, palette and I'm not going to even use it all. I've got to stop putting so much paint out. Pretty much there. Now I've got some cadmium yellow light and I'm going to add some of that into it. Just a very little bit. Because this is the colour of the grass. That colour I just put on there was just the, the base colour for it. Now I've given this a bit of a dry and I want to come onto that grass there and try and create some grass, leaving some dark colours within it. Probably put a little bit out of there somewhere, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Very gingerly. There we go. Bit of it going up the tree there. Bit of it over there. Now we have our grey again and the black and we want a very dark grey just subtly highlighting that black within there okay nothing too loud because pretty much from there there's a rock here bit of rock let's say there's some rock over there as well how's that looking yeah we just want it to look like rock Okay, just something like that. Leaving a little bit of dark between this and the grass there, okay? Then there's bits of rock. You can grab this on its edge. You wanna try and make um, pebble shapes out here. Just at the bottom of this dark stuff. Just something like that. coming from the bottom of that grey and you, we're going to dribble some of the, the grass but in cahoots with the horizon line just some of it sort of coming across the top of this rock here you know so keep some dark in between the green and that grey and we just got some more tracing out here it just adds extra element value to your painting you know picking up the yellow green that I mixed previously and you want to lightly hit that now leaving the darks there leaving the blacks there you've got to sort of balance the colors balance the light and darks try and put some pride in your brush strokes uh, a little bit out there here So, put a little bit out here, just on there to break that up. And now I'm going to highlight, not the whole surface area like I just did with that previous colour, just where you feel it needs light hitting it. Probably kiss it against there somewhere and a band coming out here. I don't know, something like that. Now these rocks we're just going to highlight, okay? So we're going to grab the grey and the raw sea in a dark, okay? So it won't clash with that sand. And I'm just looking for the, I don't know, the tops of these to separate them all from everybody else. Separate them from each other, sorry. There we go, we'll put some water in there as well.
just so they're not doesn't look like they're floating on that sand there. I'm grabbing that burnt umber that I had with the black and I'm sort of hitting the bottoms here and then just ticking it out like that okay so if anything it's got some kind of casting shadow there like so just hitting the bottom of it and pulling it out grab the bottom of your rock and pull it out and with a bit of luck when I look in the um, monitor they might look like they're sitting in the sand there that's what I'm going for anyway All right, now we'll just kind of put some water on the shore there. So I've got the, I'm pretty sure this is the craft paint. I've got that same little flat brush again, and I'm just going to subtly get some water. I might put some of the cerulean blue with it, just to taint it so it's not pure, stark, loud, bright in your eyes, white, you know. Now see here, I want to try and get some water easily and then pull it out let me see that I think that's going to work I want some of it let's get it nice and flat on your brush see I'm going to come here in cahoots with the horizon light pulling that water back out into the lake or the swamp whatever it is what, what would you call that a swamp someone comment below Ian that's a swamp or Ian that's a lake that's working it's working now I'm going to dry my brush I dried the living buggery out of it just so this can really come back like that not just a solid band there you really want to put that little bit of effort into your brush strokes Let's say it around here. So I'm jingling it and jangling it, jingling it, jangling it, coming to those rocks. There we go, and pull it back into the water. Pretty easy, isn't it, eh? You can do this with the brush stuck in your mouth, I reckon. Just dangle it back into there so it's got some kind of edge to it. Pretty simple, won't you say? That's why I say you can do it like that. There we go. And I'm just bringing it to the water there. Keeping these rubbing marks in cahoots with the horizon line, of course. If you want, I'll see what it's going to look like. We could probably put some bodies of water just dribbling in between the rocks here as well in cahoots with the horizon line is that the right color yeah don't want it too bright just some water there that's dribbled in there just looks like some water's bodies of water are sitting down in there still you know next to the rocks Keeping it all in cahoots with the horizon line. See a bit of water there on the sand. I'm just going to grab some of the, let's say, the burnt umber and some white. Doesn't have to be fully mixed. I want to just put some dead leaves on that tree that we put out there. And I'm using a hog bristle filbert. Something that can create the scratchiness. So I'll start off the painting there. I want this nice and airy, very airy, see? See how airy I got that? And then I can look at it and work out where and if I want some, see like there, I can join that to that bit of a branch now, a bit harder. I just want it nice and airy. Coming across the trunks like that. How's that looking? That's well it's okay it's it's working I'll bring it off here a bit and you put it in front of the trunks nice and airy I'll bring something off this one here I 
I don't know what sort of tree it is. Please don't ask me because um, I don't know. It's an Eni Barberini tree. That's what it is. I'm just darkening some of it where it's sitting on those limbs there. Put something on there as well. Now just to finish that off so that stuff doesn't look like it's floating, come from these branch limbs with some darker one and we'll just join stuff to it like that, okay? Hopefully this is going to work. And we'll, we're going to connect stuff. So it's coming there, connecting. Bits are connecting to it, okay? Just up there, and you're just connecting limbs to that foliage. All right, I'm just going to sign it, but before I sign it, I've just mixed up the darkest colour with some of that blue there, just so I can kind of dance the most thin, skinniest line I could possibly find, just to sit some of this water down under the sand there because the wet sand is darker than the actual colour of the sand. There we go, nice and skinny. Did that work? I've just got the slightest bit of white in that blue colour and I'm just gingerly highlighting the top of these little water movements on the sand here. Just gingerly. I'll I'll put an autograph on here, nice and small. Now check out the links below this video. There's all my traceables. There's the paintings available for sale. There's my Patreon. I want to thank all my patrons who support me every month. There's my art group page. Request to become a member there. Message me on Facebook if you want to purchase a painting or you want to grab them blending brushes and the putter on a brush. Okay, let's whack a frame on that and see how this one turned out. Oh, yeah, we've got the tree up there, but it's, it's off centre a bit. But there you go. That ain't too shabby. It's a nice painting, something different. I don't know what I'm going to call it, but I'll work something out. And I do know you can do that. Okay, thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to tell your friends. But if you didn't like it, you tell everybody, okay? Goodbye, good luck, and good on you. <coughs>